Incidentally, the president did do Wheel of Fortune. Uh, we did a tape, but we couldn't air it. Uh, the uh, category in the first round was occupation, and he couldn't name one. So I. Uh, <laughs> assuming your brandy is still uh, is still in front of you, I now present Charles Kessler who is editor of the Claremont Review of Books and is a distinguished professor of government at Claremont McKenna College. In addition to his fine editorial leadership for the uh, Claremont Review of Books, for over 20 years, Dr. Kessler has taught for the Claremont Institute's Publius and Lincoln Fellowship programs, and he'll be an integral part of our new uh, John Marshall Fellowship for Lo Young Lawyers. Um, he's publishing a book on Barack Obama and the American liberalism next year. I don't know if this is, a, if this is true, Charles. If it's not, it should be. Supposedly, the title they're working on is Barack Obama, What the Hell Were We Thinking? <laughs> but put me down for a gross. <laughs> Charles Kessler, Charles. The president was to remove a bust of Churchill from the Oval Office and return it unceremoniously to Great Britain. No one knows exactly why. Perhaps he wished to clean house of everything associated with his demon predecessor, George W. Bush, to whom the bust had been loaned. There were rumors that Obama's grandfather had been mistreated by British colonial authorities in Kenya. So this was payback. I like to think that Churchill's eyes followed Obama around the room. <laughs> More likely, though, the gesture was part of Obama's determination to, in his own ominous words, fundamentally transform the United States of America beginning with its heroes and its image of itself as a proud part of Western and especially Anglo-American civilization, the civilization of which Churchill was at once a savior and a symbol. President Obama is not keen on that past in which he sees great and unmitigated injustice interrupted by occasional bursts of moral transcendence like his own election. <laughs> And besides, Winston Churchill was so politically incorrect. Uh, Obama, we are told, smokes cigarettes furtively when Michelle isn't watching. But Churchill smoked cigars openly, unashamedly. And he even referred to them sometimes as victory cigars, uh, a concept of which Obama is rather disapproving because a victory, a victory is so one-sided. <laughs> so simplistic. And then there's the issue already referred to several times by speakers tonight, the largeness of Churchill, the size of the man, a beef eater if there ever was one a size which definitely violates Michelle's anti-obesity guidelines. <laughs> and of course, the things he said about Gandhi, very insensitive to third world cultures. But don't get me wrong. There are many similarities between Barack Obama and Winston Churchill. Uh, and I'm surprised that Larry Arne didn't remark them when he was up here. Uh, each, of course, is a best-selling author uh, and famous orator. Each wrote several books about himself, though when Churchill did so, he was describing how difficult, uh, uh, he was describing his part in some rather large actions called the First World War and the Second World War. <laughs> and when Obama did so, he was describing how difficult it was to be a teenager in Hawaii. <laughs> One, really, one could only imagine how eloquent Churchill could have been 
if he had had a teleprompter. <laughs> now, we know that the, uh, the prime minister had a way with the English language. Many of his famous sayings have been adverted to already. But really, his uh, style pales in comparison to what President Obama has managed to do with the language, his contributions to it, if you want to call them that. For example, the president has invented wholly new economic concepts, like jobs saved or created, <laughs> which, if you notice, includes all jobs. <laughs> Uh, except those lost. <laughs> and he's not very interested in that category. Uh, the president has vouchsafed new meanings for old words, like millionaire and billionaire, which, as you know, now means anyone who earns more than $250,000 a year. <laughs> and above all, we should remember the beautiful new words he has popularized like Solyndra, <laughs> uh, which is, uh, uh, if you, it, its roots are obscure, they're Latin, but if you, if you look them up, it, it turns out the word in Latin means, where the sun don't shine. I don't, I don't want to pass over the, uh, the most famous uh, words that President Obama has yet said, by which I mean those uh, radiant monosyllables, hope and change. Um, but suffice it to say that this administration is not the change we were waiting for or hoping for. Uh, here at the Claremont Institute, we, we believe that Winston Churchill is the kind of statesman we should long for even though we can't simply afford to wait for someone so magnanimous to appear. We have to learn from his great example uh, how to gather our courage and wisdom in the election year that now lies before us. And as the dangers to our beloved republic gather afresh and aplenty, we must resolve uh, in the uh, in the words of Churchill's great exhortation, which I believe is Tom Fuente's favorite and very apt exhortation as well, that ladies and gentlemen, we must never, never, never surrender. Yeah. Yeah. To Sir Winston, Churchill, ladies and gentlemen.